Hey, welcome to another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And on today's episode, we are going to build us a bottom end. So let's dive in and see what it consists of. All right, guys, it's been quite a bit of time. So it is time to start assembling a motor. So let's get the engine stand out of retirement and we're gonna grab the engine block fresh from the machine shop here. And this one is gonna go together with balanced stock rods, because these things can hold a wallop, and some custom Trom pistons. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this today all right so right now we don't need this guy we just need the block so we're gonna grab that we're gonna put it on the engine stand and all of my engine stands are kind of preset to g54b so that'll be easy just to pop it in and be good to go so let me grab some screws and get it on the stand all right so we were missing a couple items and we contacted dads and he got everything we needed, exactly what we needed and how we needed it, quick, fast, and a hurry. So thanks again to dad for supplying the OEM parts. So we're gonna begin with those actually. We're gonna put in the oil squirters first, uh, all four of them. And then we're gonna lay in some bearings. The cleaning has already been done, um, which is basically brake parts cleaner, a microfiber um, cloth, and then you wanna re-lubricate to make sure you don't uh, dry anything out, starts to rust or anything like that. And boom, we're good to go. Okay, and it's gonna go together just like that washers on both sides we're gonna torque this sucker down and we should be good to go all right blocks already been hot tank so you don't have to worry about any additional cleaning internally so we're good to go there yep and we're gonna put all four together just like that all righty and make sure you have them aiming in the right position because they are different some point left some point right all right, that looks perfect. All right, now we are ready to lay down that crank. All right, so let's lay that bad boy down and keep it going. Now remember, when you're messing with these end caps, they are numbered one through five. So don't get it mixed up. All right, nothing but the best. All right, so we're using King's main bearings here which is gonna work out excellent in this application. Track tough, street smart. All right, so we're gonna apply these, okay. All righty. All right, so the ones that have the slit on it go to the top, which will be the block, and then the solid one goes to the cap all right so we're gonna pop these bad boys in and we should be good to go also another thing to note these are standard bearings make sure you know the size of your bearings before you start assembling your motor and yep take it from there Okay, there we go. Bearings are in and looking good. Uh, we're gonna clean these just, you know, just to make sure. Better clean than not. Also, um, the center bearing also has a thrust washer built into it. So there's no mistaking it and they are identical top and bottom. So there's no mixing it up either. So basically um, you're going to put lube on the face never the back okay 
um, and we're gonna put that on as soon as we finish cleaning it and we're gonna be able to clean the crankshaft which was right down here and uh, yeah we're gonna drop that crank in there give it a nice spin put the cat uh, caps on there and then last but not least before we torque everything down we have to make sure we use our lubricant for the threads on here and on the actual nuts up top to make sure that everything is assembled properly. Okay, so now that those are lubed up and put in their proper position from one to five, all right, now we could put in the ARP studs with the assembly lube. Okay, these are torqued down to 90 foot-pounds, right? So if you can't do this with your 90 foot-pounds of torque on your crank, right, you need to take it apart and make sure that line bore hone was done correctly. If you haven't done a line bore hone and it doesn't move that easily, go get a line bore hone to make sure it moves that easily. All right. so. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put together some rods and pistons. This is where it's gonna get interesting. Okay, so starting off with the rods, you want them facing towards you. And how do you know from front to back which way is the right way and which way is the wrong way? Well, these rods were actually balanced for this specific engine. So um, these are the same weight, and then this mark signifies the front. If your rods don't have these marks signifying the front, there's another tall tail sign, which will signify, you know, facing the engine, which way is the right way, and which way is the wrong way, okay? And that is, your locks in here stay to the exhaust side, okay? That's on every single rod through one through four. Locks, exhaust side, nothing intake side. So if it's like this, that's incorrect because the locks are on the intake side. So you need the locks to be on the exhaust side. That is correct. Okay, so now you know which way is facing your connecting rod forward. Next, your pistons, depending on which model you get, it doesn't particularly matter, but these are flat top pistons. Let me show you what those look like in just a second. Move these over. Okay. Drum. Okay. Open in the box of goodies. Now these pistons are specifically made for the machine shop they came from. So you cannot order these yourself so hey let me get some g54b pistons if you do they won't look like this i guarantee you that okay okay and if you look there's a little dip for the intake valve exhaust valve is not going to get that close so all right so, just like I said, put your connecting rod facing forward. This is the proper way it's supposed to be installed. Okay. So, let's unbox this, or unbag it, rather, and see what we got. Okay, so we have it unpackaged. So, as you can see... The design of the piston, right? 
And this design is from years and years of development. Full skirt, solid, thick skirts. Not half skirts or thin skirts or anything like that. Look at that. Nice design. Very, very nice. All right. Now, the wrist pin. As you can see, it's a heavy duty wrist pin. Uh, how can you tell it's heavy duty? Well, the hole in the center, some of the holes on regular duty or medium duty wrist pins is a lot bigger. When you go heavy duty, the wall thickness is larger in turn, making the center diameter smaller. And that makes it a heavy duty. You don't actually change the outer diameter. It's still gonna remain 22 millimeter, whether you go uh, light duty or heavy duty. Um, so for instance, if this was an RPM build and a light duty all motor application, this would be very thin, like it'd be an eighth thick, and this would be a lot lighter. Rotational mass, so you can do higher RPMs. This one is heavy duty, so you can pack on boost. Go as heavy as you want with the boost. So that is very important for you guys to understand wrist pin duty, because if not, it'll just snap, and then the piston will start flopping around, and you run into other problems. So, yeah, wrist pin duty versus piston. Okay, I applied the lightest coat of assembly lube on the piston and the connecting rod. You don't want to put anything together dry. So, now that that's assembly lubed, now we could slide our pin, and then last but not least, do our C-clips. And then we should be good to have this first piston assembled. Okay, now to get your C-clip in, it's gonna be a little hard, but you're gonna take your flathead screwdriver, wrap it with the cloth so you don't scratch the aluminum, and you're going to use your fingers and push. It's going to be a little time consuming, but I'm going to show you guys after I get it done. Okay. And there we have it. The C-clip is in. All right. And let's flip it over so we can do the next C-clip. So basically, uh, you start by laying the C-clip in the groove to begin with. Then you're gonna push from this area. So locked in like that, and you're gonna push from here to get that sucker in the groove and locked in. So, yep, you're going to push from this area, from the C, and it should slide right in. 100%, ready to rock and roll. Now, I have three more to do. So, I'll be back after I, after I knock these out. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, so here are all four of them. Now, next step is putting in the piston rings. So, um, putting in the piston rings is a nice step. Uh, we're gonna start with the bottom piston rings, which go on the lower cuff, which will be this one right here. Then we'll end with the top piston rings, which will be the top piston rings up top there. And these have to be gapped. These Let's just say if we want, we'll be able to run upwards of 30 to 40 PSI for instance, right? Um, we want to gap these accordingly. So uh, if they expand, they don't touch. So um, 
there's a good rule of thumb for these guys and I'm gonna show you. So, for instance, the top groove is gonna be tighter than the bottom groove, right? So let's say, for instance, we have 20 thou on the top groove, then on the bottom groove, we have 26 thou. That's how that works. Okay, so you roughly wanna be about six apart. Um, it ends up working out better. Uh, but let's say if you wanna run it tighter, uh, you can run 16 and then 20 over here. So it depends what your preference is. Um, and then kind of take it from there. So yeah. Okay, so um, I did all of these pistons in advance, so I'm kind of doing it backwards. But I saved this one for you guys because there is some things you guys need to know. So when you're doing your piston rings, okay, you got your uh, measuring tool here, which is a filler gauge. Then you got your compression ring, your oil ring, and your oil galley rings here. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna measure each ring in the hole that it's going to. So for instance, if you're measuring piston number three and you're using ring from piston number one, it's not gonna be the same, okay? You just wanna get used to measuring each cylinder on each hole just to make sure everything is perfect. So you wanna get your measurements absolutely correct on what you're gonna uh, go with. These piston rings, nor any piston rings, do not come pre-filed. So I don't care what pistons you buy, whether it's, it's uh, you know, manly pistons, JE pistons, it doesn't matter. When you get rings in the pack like this, they need to be filed, okay? So top ring is gonna be a little bit tighter. Second ring, which is the oil ring, is gonna be a little bit looser. And in some cases, you might need to file the upper ring, you know, given the circumstances, to allow the oil to come down and drain through these holes on the pistons. I know that that reflection is ridiculous, but yep. Now, another thing to note on your piston rings, right? You don't just choose a side and pop it in. It's gonna have an indication, whether it be an in, whether it be a dot is going to be something. And in this case, is going to be an N signifying north. North faces up to the, to the compression, okay? So this goes on the top, does not go upside down. Same thing on the compression ring. This is going to have a dot, a north, or something on it. This one is an N signifying north. Why? because this oil ring is napered, okay? Napered is, instead of the wall of the ring being a circle, it's like a R. So the rest of it is smooth and has a cliffhanger. Up top here, on top of my hand, is north, and it scrapes the cylinder walls to make sure all of the oil goes down. So that way you have a perfect seal for the following ring upstairs. So, because this one's napered, is very important you might be able to see it there. Oh, there it goes. Wait, wait, wait. There it goes. It's very important to put these rings in properly. So I'm going to cut these down and then fit them into the corresponding bore, which is this is cylinder number one, two, three, four. Okay. And uh, so we're going to be testing everything out on cylinder number one, which cylinder number one is the closest to the timing chain. So one, two, three, four. Okay, to put the pistons in and we're gonna torque them down to their specified uh, torque specs because we do have ARP rod bolts and we need to use the ARP lube for each bolt. And also I need to show you guys what bearings we're using. Okay, so the piston rings are on, they're measured, everything is facing the right way. The piston rings are clocked, which is another important thing. And then we're gonna jump on to the bearings. Now this is new, old stock, okay? 
these are tri-metal bearings from this specific company. Okay, part number. If you could find it, definitely grab you a set right there. Um, most of these bearings, especially the newer sets, um, are aluminum silicon. And for our motors, that does not work well at all for the connecting rods uh, specifically, especially when you're trying to make power because aluminum, especially under the heat that these engines like to produce, will more or less melt. So that's the wrong area where you wanna have something kind of fail at. So we use tri-metal. Racing engines use tri-metal bearings. Um, if you can get uh, ACL, um, uh, I think it's C, CP or XP. I think it's XP. XP is a uh, tri-metal coated bearing, so it has like a nice uh, coating on there um, for breaking. But these are tri-metal non-coated, um, you know, for high temperature and all that other good stuff. But this is pretty much as good as it gets for our motor um, for the uh, rod bearings. So this is what we're going to use and kind of take it from there. A lot of the other providers for our engine have uh, fallen off. Uh, we're trying to currently see if we can get um, a couple of companies to make some bearings for us, uh, like King's Bearings or ACL, um, in a tri-metal application, not an aluminum silicon application. But, you know, still going. We'll see what happens. But uh, other than that, these are standard size bearings for the standard size rods. These rods have also been rectified, so they're actually uh, straight. You can see the fresh new cuts there. So these are um, perfect. They've already been measured out, so that's perfect there too. We got the perfect clearance on these plus the bearings. Um, when you take the rods to the machine shop and they do the rectifying, they usually take the bearings to measure up to make sure everything is a perfect fit. So, um, since that's already been done, we're gonna start popping these bad boys in one at a time. Also, when you get these uh, done like that, you can't take this cap and put it on this rod because then it won't be the same size. This cap has to stay with this rod, this cap has to stay with this rod, so on and so forth. So, make sure you don't switch these caps up, take your time, do them one at a time, and you'll be good to go. Okay, excuse the fan noise in the background, but the pistons and rods are in. They are torqued down to 36 foot pounds on the ARP bolts. It is uh, 34 to 40, or excuse me, 34 to 36 foot pounds of torque on the uh, rod bolts ARP, and they are torqued down. I did them in three steps, so they're good to go. And yep, bearings are in, everything is uh, tight and nice. Rotates nice and easy by hand, so nothing's binding. So that's perfect, that's just twisting it, you know. Um, but yeah, everything looks good. And the short block, the internals, let's just say, is complete. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and found it helpful in some way, shape, and form. If you like what you've seen, definitely consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for updated notifications. But until then, remember guys, knowledge is power, and I will see you next time.